And so we're going to dive in first to what selenium deficiency looks like. Now, many of you, um, you know, this is where sometimes identifying a deficiency actually knows what to look for, right? And so when we look at what a selenium deficiency looks like, we've got kind of two categories here that I want to highlight. The first is this top category. These are symptoms, right? Symptoms of selenium deficiency. So what's the difference between symptoms and really disease? Okay, so symptoms are, think of them as pre-disease, right? These are the things that happen before the deficiency becomes so severe that your doctor actually tests you and recognize an, an existing or active disease. So symptoms come first. So generally, again, speaking, symptoms are first. Diseases come second. Most people, hopefully, if you've got a good doctor and you're paying attention to your health, hopefully, uh, you don't end up down here first, right? You should, you should be looking for selenium deficiency up here. So again, selenium deficiency looks like first, symptoms. Second, if it's really chronic and stays around a long enough period of time, it can look like diseases. So thinning eyebrows, hair loss, weak or splitting fingernails, damaged skin. There's some, actually, interestingly enough, some people treat their dandruff with shampoos like head and shoulders, um, why? What do they contain? They contain their active ingredient is a type of selenium. So we know that skin inflammation can manifest as selenium deficiency. Fatigue, depression, and we should probably add in here irritability is another very common one. So if you're finding yourself truly irritable, um, you might consider selenium as, as a potential for the issue. Brain fog, muscle weakness, and also muscle pain. So if you struggle with unexplainable muscle pain or weakness and, and it's not you know you're, you're not working out aggressively you weren't injured there was no traumatic injury this is something to, to consider with selenium deficiency but also frequent illness and infection so if you're that person who gets sick every year right if somebody walks through your house and they've you know they they've been around somebody with a cold or a flu and you pick up everything at the drop of a hat think selenium because uh, selenium plays a major, major role in helping your immune system recognize pathogens and eradicating those pathogens. So frequent illness, frequent infections. In essence, you're, again, you're the person that gets sick all the time. Now, coming down here, diseases linked to selenium deficiency. One of the big issues is, is heart disease. Now, particularly something called congestive heart failure and cardiomyopathy. Now, there's a disease uh, originally discovered predominantly in China. The Chinese did a lot of research because they have a lot of selenium depleted soil. And so it's not an uncommon deficiency to have there, but heart disease, congestive heart failure, cardiomyopathy, otherwise known as Kishan's disease, um, that condition again will manifest as a problem with the heart. So if your doctor's ever diagnosed you with congestive heart failure, um, and they say, hey, you have congestive heart failure, you're, maybe your legs are swelling up and, and fluid is accumulating in your lower extremities and they've never tested you for selenium, ask them to test you for selenium deficiency. You know, most doctors don't want to do that because their claim is that selenium deficiency only happens in third world countries. Well, guess what? That's not true at all. As a matter of fact, if you live depending on where you get your food from, because most selenium comes from the soil, and then the animals that eat the plants that accumulate selenium, those animals um, then translate selenium into our diet. But if you live in the north, whether it's east, and we're talking about the U.S. here, or west, we're talking about low levels of selenium in the soil. So let's say, for example, you live in Oregon and you like to buy all your food locally grown and organic, know that that soil has got less selenium in it than the soil here in my state of Texas, and that might put you at a greater risk for developing that selenium deficiency. So if you live in the Northeast, if you live in the Northwest, you have a potential greater risk of selenium deficiency just by the nature of the quantity of selenium in the soil. So. It's not just third world countries, folks. It's, it's very, very real and it's very, very much here in the US. And, and I see it on a really frequent basis in my nutrition practice. So again, you just want to be aware of it because if you're aware, you can have that conversation with your doctor. It's very easy to test for selenium deficiency and knock that out. There are other 
diseases though linked to selenium deficiency, probably one of the most well-studied nutrients as it relates to cancer, okay? Particularly breast cancer, prostate cancer, liver cancers. And so if you've been diagnosed with cancer, and again, and, and you're maybe even being treated with this cancer and your doctors haven't looked at selenium, look, this is one of the emerging fields of research is using selenium nanoparticles to treat cancer um, because it, it, research, preliminary research shows that it's extremely effective. So again, we want to make sure you're not depleted in selenium because selenium deficiency by itself increases the risk for the development of certain cancers. So again, taking care of that. We know that selenium plays a role in thyroid disease and I'll show you a little bit more about that in just a minute. Fatigue. Um, now fatigue and when we say fatigue is fatigue a disease it is if they call it CFS right and so many of you may have been diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome and that's what you're struggling with well that can also be a symptom here. Neurological diseases, Alzheimer's, progressive dementia linked to selenium deficiency, mood disorders linked especially um, agitation and irritability and then we also have bone and joint diseases as well as muscle pain and inflammation. So muscle, bone and joint disease without trauma. Again, this is the key, the cue in there is if, I'm not talking about if you worked out aggressively and injured your knee and now you're dealing with a chronic injury. I'm talking about um, your, your muscles, your joints hurt and there's no, unex, there's no explainable reason as to why. You haven't injured yourself, etc. So very, very common in insulin deficiency and then infertility is another big one ladies and gentlemen if you struggle if you're struggling to have a baby if you're struggling to get pregnant um, that selenium plays a major role in fertility health for men you know um, first of all I want to just bring this up since we're talking about fertility as it relates to selenium a lot of times the ladies get blamed for the fertility problem and then they go to the fertility clinic and they get pumped full of a bunch of hormones, right? But men, it might be you that's the issue, right? And so one of the things we know about selenium is selenium helps with sperm motility and something called sperm viability. So men, if you're low selenium, your sperm don't swim as well. They don't make the journey as well. If you're low in selenium, your viability, the membranes around your sperm break too easy, so your sperm can't survive the journey. So not only are they slower swimmers, but they're weaker in terms of surviving that journey. And so this can lead to a fertility problem with couples. The same, but with women, we, we see issues with eggs um, being less viable in, in the antioxidant status of women, putting them in a position where it's harder um, it's harder for that for that conception to occur because one of the again one of the fundamentals here is low antioxidants reduces fertility. This is why cigarette smokers and alcoholics have a harder time getting pregnant. This is why people who have very poor diets have a harder time getting pregnant because their antioxidant status is poor and that leads to you have to understand one of the roles of selenium is this is a very potent antioxidant and it protects not just the sperm, the membrane around the sperm, but it protects the egg, right? And so it protects the viability uh, of the potential to get pregnant through preventing reactive oxygen species or free radicals from destroying the egg and the sperm. So very important because fertility treatment is on the rise, right? If we look at a lot of couples today, they're having to go to reproductive endocrinologists to have a baby. In my opinion, this may sound a little, well, that's okay. I'm just going to hit you in the face with it. And if it happens to be you and you get offended, that's, a, that's okay too. In my opinion, it's irresponsible to go to a reproductive endocrinologist if you haven't looked at nutrition first. Because nutrition is one of the most important elements to healthy capacity to get pregnant or to sustain a viable pregnancy. And when you force it with hormones, what you're actually doing is you're overriding your body's natural ability to carry the baby to term and to deliver a healthy baby by overpowering the body with hormones that prevent it from, you know, you remember your, your nutrients are fail safes. They're what, they're what abort when a baby's supposed to be aborted because there's not enough zinc because the brain won't develop and now the baby's going to have health consequences as a result of that. So 
Nutrition and fertility are very critical and selenium plays a major, major role in that. So if you are having struggles here, before you go and inject yourself with a bunch of hormones, look solidly at selenium, but look more, even more solidly, look at your overall nutritional status, both of you, male and female, because both of you are playing a role in that capacity for a healthy fertility. Then we have inflammatory bowel disease, and this is a big one, and I'll show you why in just a minute. Um, because selenium plays a role in regulating the inflammation in the GI tract. So those are some of the big symptoms and diseases associated with selenium. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.